What are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now, what do you think? You think I'm qualified? We're picking your nose, Clark. Let's go. Look alive. Coming to you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now is the time where myself and Jim are going to speak. Da da da. Well, Jim, I guess we should we should start our show now. Why? Why? Because it's time for the movie hour. What movie hour? The movie hour. The how long? How long is the movie hour? Twenty five minutes this time. Twenty five minutes of movie hour. Yeah, we got. We you got know what? Cut. I think I got twenty three and a half minutes. Of a movie hour, I can I can manage twenty three and a half minutes. Okay. Um, before we introduce our guests, I kind of want to run down what we have in store today. We have our very special interview for the first half hour of our of our show, and then we got our flashback. Then we'll kick him out. Then then we'll kick him. Out. No, he's going to stay if he wants to stay. What? I'll and then two, two, you going to stay? Yeah, I'll stay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so twenty two minutes, and we kick him out. Yes. Okay, good. And mm-hmm. then after we got our flashback movie reviews, which it includes Hot Fuzz and Thunder Road, we're That's gonna right. introduce our guests right now. We didn't really do that. We got That's we cool. got Tua Kialoha. Yep. How how'd I do on that? Yeah, you did good. Tua uh, How did I do on it? Oh, you always do good, <laughs> <laughs> Tua, you can find him on his Amazon Prime TV show. Samoan Gold, and then recently his new film that's coming out to a theater near you here in Utah, uh, Dear Lord. Tua, thank you for coming out with us. I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for the invitation, man. I was excited. Yeah, we're we're happy to have you. And also... Because of Jim. <laughs> and also we have the lovely Emily Fox. Thanks for coming out with us today, Emily. Tua, this, <laughs> this, this last weekend was a very special weekend for you. We want... You won an award as as the director in Dear Lord, yep. won Best Ensemble Cast. Tell me about how you came up with this cast, and when did you know that it was kind of going to be something special? Um, I came up with the cast. Uh, like 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 Jim says, um, I have friends that are talented talented actors, man. And when I write a script, I automatically would like picture them playing the role. Um, we did have an audition for uh, the main character, for which you know his name in the movie is called The Game. And uh, where was he two years ago? Uh, he was in prison. Um, nobody, I mean, nobody knew it until the Utah Film Festival that he was sitting in the prison cell two years ago, and now he just won the best <laughs> actor <laughs> role. In, uh, and we talked a little bit before the show about how. Anyway, uh, we're going to be able to watch it. It's not wide release yet, but you're expecting to have a, a theatrical release soon. Yeah. So um, I'm going to have a well, just announced tonight, man. I'm going to have a Salt Lake screening next week in West Valley at the Cinemark Valley Film Mall. Okay. And how Thursday? And how do we help? Like what uh, you were telling me, that it's going proceeds are going to help. Yes. Yes. So one of the cast members who plays Detective Adonai is one of the detectives that, that, that bust the main character. His son had a trampoline ac- accident and uh, broke his uh, uh, broke his neck. And he was not supposed to be walking for the rest of his life, but apparently he's been doing uh, seven days of worth of uh, therapy, and he's, he's doing a lot of progress. So proceeds go to him and his medical bills and whatever he has to cover on his own. Yeah, but what you're not understanding is what Brady's asking is how do we get free tickets? <laughs> oh, yeah, man, no. I got you guys, man. That's I what, got you. That's what, hey, that's movie it. hour, I got you guys. Man, yeah. I'll pay for y'all tickets. Man. I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it. That was that We're wasn't up. what I was going for, but two plus three. Yes, and then um, <laughs> tell us a little bit a little bit about Dear Lord. What's the premise behind it? Oh, Dear Lord. So Dear Lord is about a street hustler. You know. Um, God tries to speak to him three times, you know, uh, through seeing other people struggle, and he ignores God. And then finally he gets caught by, you know, uh, uh, by an undercover cop, and he asks his God to come back into his life again. That's how he finds redemption. And, uh, yeah. Where did you come up with the story for this? Man, um, two years ago I worked at a group home, and uh, I was sent on a mission to take a kid to do his – um, uh, what, is it, 
what's that test you gotta take for high school? SAT? Yeah, no, a GED. A GED. Sorry, my mind went blank. GED. Once you go take him to his GED, and the lady says, "Man, you have five hours." I'm like, "Wow, I have a lot of time on my hands." And there's this the story that's been clicking on my mind for a long time, and I wrote that story within like two, three hours. Wow. Yeah. And I, Jim, and a lot of my uncles have been very. Uh, passionate about your story. I, I, I'm really curious if you were willing to tell it, just your story, your background, and what got you into acting and stuff like that. Oh, man. I, I had a bodyguarding business, and, you know, Sundance Film Festival is a big thing out here. Mm-hmm. And a, a casting director pulled me to the side and said I should, I should be in movies. In my head, I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kept in contact. <laughs> uh, she, I send them my headshots, you know, selfies. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't an actor. Yeah. And she Have you Brady, have you seen his like headshots with his like dreads like his braids? I have yeah, only the, seen the one on the IMDb on the is the one I, I didn't really do much digging into oh, your headshots. Wow, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you don't mess with that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so this nice guy that's all like, Oh, you know, I just want to ask everything. <laughs> yeah, he had dreads down to like here and I'm just like Oh wow. So it was yeah. a lot cleaner than it is right now yeah it was like you or, know, i had like two braids so always braided okay but uh um so then you you've kept in touch got these headshots yeah and she sent me she said hey i mean the producer loves your look you know if you send me some minds can you study them i was like oh yeah <laughs> and not knowingly that that person that i went to go audition for was for jeff johnson i didn't know who jeff johnson is but now I know who Jeff Johnson is. <laughs> so tell people who, who Jeff Johnson is. Jeff Johnson is, is, in my eyes, the, one of the biggest casting directors of Utah. Oh, and he is He is like the, the, he is the, 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 he is the. But at the time, you know, he was just a regular John. And when I met him, he was just such a He's nice just guy. a regular John. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just some, and I bet that was nice for you because you probably weren't as, like, I'm, exactly. I, like your pressure was, was low. So you're like, all right, this went, went into joking, this. Joking, genuine, you know what I mean? Like, and... I went audition, and I stopped it. I was like, "No, I can do it better." And they, uh, uh, he said, "Okay." He he, he kind of like chuckled. So he, he, we we take my thing, and then like about two weeks later, bro, I got the role, and that was my first role. What movie was that? Code of Honor. Code of Honor. So that was the one that Dave told me about this weekend about yeah. how he just he ran into you and he didn't know who you were, yep. and he's like like. Where are you from? Like yep. I've never seen you. Like what? When? How long you've been acting? And then you and you told him it was your first, yep. your first film, and you just happened to. He just, thought I was from California. Yeah. And man, he just he was just so nice. I said, "You need to talk to somebody. I'm gonna introduce you to some people." And that was like, man, right then and there, man. When people do stuff like that, man, it's like you're already in there with me, man. So and it's just been snowballing ever since you've yeah. uh, you started writing, you started directing yeah. your own stuff. Like what? A lot of people, I imagine, when they get into the business, they just kind of stick to acting. What made you want to get into writing and directing? Um, you want me to be honest with you guys? Yeah, go I was ahead. just tired of waiting for people to put me in their movies. Okay. So you want, uh, yeah. I, I, That's a good point because... I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I think that's the way to do it. And that's what Jordan, like, uh, a, a few weeks ago, Jordan Peele... Um, he got in trouble for uh, for a lot, kind of the that way of saying like he wants to write movies for people that look like him because oftentimes that movies haven't been able so might as well if you are in the position of power to do it write your own movies and uh, cast people who look like you and who and yourself and that kind of so that's awesome and, and and power when I say power I know you say power but I like to use the word platform no platform my bad but no 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 you're no. good no 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 you're good <laughs> that's great yeah my my word is platform you know I you know. Um, Jim, what do you call it uh, when you tacos type <laughs> tacos? Yeah, do tacos typecast. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I, I mean. I used to get typecast. I was booked to security. Dude, you talking to the typecast king, dude? Uh, yeah, see, uh, that's why he knows about it. That's why I'm asking him. Yeah, but I was tired of typecast and I was tired of waiting for people to put me in their movie. So I started writing my own content. Well, see? if you ever want guy number four at the bar, dude, <laughs> Is that, that's Jim's dude. <laughs> and that is Jim to a T. Super. Uh, what was so? What was the first thing that you wrote and directed? Is it uh, Simone Gold or Simone Gold? Okay, Simone Gold one, yeah. which is on Desperate Times, which is on Amazon Prime, and then uh, Simone Gold two. Yep, Family Ties, which is on 
Amazon Prime. Oh. And then you uh, wrote Simone Gold 3. Which was on we all we got on Amazon Prime. Which is Tua and I we 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 talked a little bit before. I I, I watched episodes one, two, and three back to back to back. Just uh-huh. kind of I was at the gym and I was on the on the on the bike and I was just watching it. He's that trying way. to he's trying to brag going, dude. I could <laughs> I could run like four miles right now, man. No, no, like right now, man. I'll I'll run four miles, man. That, that's my brother there. But we were, and I was talking to <laughs> to Tua about seeing the progression of the show because it was really cool to see. Because yeah. episode one, you could very tell it's very independent. It was probably off of your back. That you 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 and your buddies just uh, wanted to get something going. Episode two, you got a little bit more snowball effect. You got something going there, but then episode three, you took a giant jump, yeah. which I really enjoyed seeing the progression there, where you went from like 17 minutes from both episodes to 30, yep. and made it seem like a, a full kind of episode, a story arcs and everything. And now I'm hooked, and I want to see the next episode. But then yeah. you told me that you, uh, you had to put some own gold on the back burner while you started working on Dear Lord. Yep. So. So like you're gonna have to, and then like, uh, yeah, some Mongo. I mean, some Mongo Four is gonna come regardless, but I just don't know the time frame. Maybe this summer. I don't know. How long does it usually take you to write something like that? Um, if I really sit down, I could I could write a script for like a short film for like three hours. Three hours. Four hours maybe. Okay. Yeah. And I I really enjoyed it. I'm I'm really excited to to see the next story arc. The you kind of played it off like. At the end of uh, episode three, was, I I don't want to spoil it, but I, I I wonder where you're gonna go with it after that. So I'm it was something, yeah, or, or if it, yeah. or if it was something else entirely. Um, and it's it's beautiful. Let me just say right. it's beautiful to have that effect on people because once you think of something and you put it into you know like your your your, your content mm-hmm. and then you get that effect on people, man, it's it's a blessing, man. For real. And I, I'm curious. I have my people I grew up watching and my idolizing. What, yeah. Who did you grow up watching and immediately think, like, I want to be like that guy or like I want to be – who is your idol? Man, The Rock. The Rock. Okay. The Rock is like off the bat, like WWE. That was one of the guys. And plus he's Polynesian and I'm Polynesian, so. Did he? Did you uh, start off watching him in the WWE or yep. just – Okay, so yep. you're, you're a true Rock fan from oh, yeah. back for – uh, did I had you... his picture in my room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what was your What's your favorite film that he's been in? My that... favorite film, yeah. um, the one that 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 speaks to me the most, is uh, um, Great Iron Gang. You know, my background is I I was a case. Oh, manager. I know your background. We've yeah. been friends for at least like eight seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, if you watch the movie, that's what I do with kids. The scene where he's talking to his team, and he says. You're not a you're not a blood no more. You're not a crip no more. And you're not an essay. You're a Mustang. You know what I mean? You're a football team now. We're a family. You know what I mean? And it just showed like the different gangs that were all getting along together for a cause. You know what I mean? To be on a football team. So that got to me. You know what I mean? Like different backgrounds coming together, man. I like movies like that that do just what you're saying, yeah. where it takes different people that come from different places but they're all now in this new situation and there's a choice of like do you stay separated or do you make the best of it see i really liked gridiron gang i but that was back when you know you and i are roughly the same age range i'm imagine i'm 24 how old are you i'm 31 31 okay so still millennial age so the i look 24 exactly you look very young (laughs) um so i remember watching that and being like really just in like enthralled with The Rock and stuff like that, so it was really cool to see that you, that was kind of a performance that you've seen. And then recently, it's kind of been awesome to see The Rock in in general now, just because he's the biggest movie star that we have in the in 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 Hollywood right now. That's it. We're breaking up. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, Jim. Okay, and uh, I appreciate you coming on again. Uh, just so everyone can remind every, um how and when can we purchase tickets for Dear Lord? Um, I'll send you guys the link. Well, how how can the people? Uh, we haven't have we don't have it up right now. Okay, Are they, but will I'll post it, be, it. Will it be like a go to the theater and just and yeah? Okay. I think it'll be a go, invitation to the theater and buy tickets there. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, those listening, be prepared. I'll definitely put out the blast when you uh, yeah. send out the link, and I'll be happy to send that out so people can go go out and watch it. Yeah, um, and yeah, and I'm I'm excited for it. I, I imagine Jim's also excited for it. Hopefully. I don't want to watch your stuff. <laughs> anyway, 
No, what's it? What'd you say? Yeah, can I give a shout out? No, no. go ahead. Get hey, shout out to my boys, uh, Inglewood Films, man. JD, Damar, Pell, uh, Salty Block Pictures, Lenny Wito from Zola. Man, that's the the film family right there. However, we move on to Hot Fuzz. Yes, let's move on to Hot Fuzz. I you could de- definitely tell the vibe was there, and mm-hmm. um, I enjoyed the the opening scenes of Simon Pegg's character, um, Officer Angel. Uh, making him this um, bad A um, detective, good at everything he's done. And then the uh, police force in London sends him off into this no-name town in 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 London to fix or just to be, be a yeah. good officer. But there. why did they send him there? Because he... He's upstaging. Up. He's upstaging everybody. Yeah, because yeah. he's so good that nobody wants him around. Uh, <laughs> so. Everyone's like, peace out, dude. So that was something that, like, um, I was watching. And I was like, hey, that's um, that's a little bit. I I can under I can empathize with the story because it's about Simon Pegg's character, Officer Angel, and uh, him meeting um, the the new police force out in this small town. And him just kind of uh, trying to keep that level of optimism and that that go get it attitude that he had when he was in London, and but moving it to this town that no accidents ever happen and just kind of this perfect town that I really really like like the dynamic like everybody was happy and just kind of like this guy was like. No, these things like there are bad things happening here. I I still like Baby Driver more than Hot Fuzz. I thought, but the Baby I, Driver is way better. Oh yeah, uh, have you seen Have you seen both? Yeah. Okay, so I I don't know. Like Hot Fuzz, it was funny at times, and I did not expect the uh, the turn that it took. It was very. Uh, it took a very like, and halfway through the movie, it was like, okay, this is this is where it's going. Very it's getting interesting. Yeah, it's getting interesting. I thought once it got to the end. It was a little bit too long. I thought the ending was uh, was stretched out a lot, a lot more than it should have been. Like there was like three or four. It kind of had like the uh, Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King endings, where like there's like three endings. I was just like, okay, let's. All right, now it's an, now it's the end. Okay, wait, no, okay, there's still like twenty minutes left, and then. So I, I had that feeling, but I still enjoyed the movie. And I just felt like at the very end of the movie, it kind of was stretching to the end. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. So Thunder Road was of the of the movies that I saw this weekend uh was my favorite. Why? Why? Because I loved how human it was. Uh did you watch it too, Jim? No, I didn't. I, no, I did watch it, but I didn't think of it as human. So, I I enjoyed uh the Jim Cummings character. He was very uh flawed. He was very sympathetic and you understood like why he was reacting in in uh ways that that he was and i thought he, the story that he told was very heartwarming and very sad but also uh i don't know i, I just enjoyed it very very much what do you think um i thought it was a good first uh entry into I'm going to make movies. Yeah. I thought it was a good, uh, here's, I'm going to, I think it's a filmmaker who could make, obviously you could say, hey, I can, I, I think I can make movies. And I and I agree. I, I think he's a good filmmaker. However, I don't think that this movie had anything to say um, that made me go, oh, I can't wait to see what he does next. Yeah. Okay. And I, I was on the, I was a different, I, I was like, okay, what's next? Because I th- honestly thought this was awesome. Like from, uh, from start, it comes off like as a comedic, like you're like, okay, this is going to be, cause I, I watch it right after I watch hot fuzz and hot fuzz is very uh, a comedic, uh, movie. Very. So I was thinking it was going to be on the lines of that. And I thought that it took a, a nice approach of there's humor when when humor is warranted, but also that it gets serious when it needs to be serious. And I thought that's where I think it was human because there's a lot of scenes in the movie where he blows up, and but you understand why he's doing that. He's, he's kind of a, out. yeah, he's stressed out. He's kind of got a screw loose in, in a way. So like I saw that kind of 
that aspect, but you also see that he's like, you realize, oh crap, I just messed up. And this is on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, and I, it's an hour and a half, so it's very short. But like, what is the movie about? Th- uh, Thunder Road. Yeah. So it's about this this police officer who his daughter he's in a custody battle with his wife, and he's gonna lose his daughter to her because she's gonna get full custody. And it's basically him trying to prove to his daughter that he's worth it and uh he, and his family that he's not a mess up and he's not a screw up and that kind of thing and it's just kind of him going down this road about proving people that he's actually a caring person even though he's flawed inside which i thought was a very powerful kind of story in a, in of itself yeah what here's my problem with first time filmmakers um a lot Here of the- it is <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, teach me ways of the dragon. Teach me Jimmy. the ways of the dragon. A lot of the times, I feel like they, they, they punch it too close to the chest, to where it's too much about them, to where it's too much about um, their mistakes, their faults, and so when it doesn't, so when it doesn't resonate, and they don't, because obviously you're going to be on a much smaller budget and you're going to be I got to cast this guy I got to cast that guy to make my movie be what I want and then when it doesn't become the movie that you want it becomes personal to you because I don't want to I don't want to hire me but so you're saying spread it out, don't just punch it all in one, trying to make an impact. Yeah. And then we got we got ten minutes left, so we're gonna quickly just kind of run down. I saw Shazam this this weekend. Uh, did you? Uh, have you? Has anyone else seen Shazam in this room? I, I don't know old Shazam, but I want to hear you what you say about okay. this. Movie. Did you see it? Jim? I saw. I saw Shazam. You saw Shazam? And I don't like um, martial arts films. No, I don't like uh, superhero superhero films. superhero films. I don't yeah. like superhero films, but I really like. The superhero film. You like this? That? You like Shazam? Did you like Shazam? Uh, uh, I did. Saying something, I'm watching it. See, uh, I I'm gonna preface this by saying I grew up loving Zachary Levi, who's my idol. Uh, so like, I was really excited that he get, was cast in this role. So when when I heard that, I knew that I was gonna be like one of those things. I was really excited to go see. So going to that, I had that all those expectations. I was really high. I was really excited to see him um, in this move movie. Um, I thought the Shazam story in comics and 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 TV shows was really silly um, just because, you know, it's a little boy that becomes Superman, essentially. He's got the powers of Superman. And so I always thought that was really odd and strange, but I really enjoyed this one. Did you like Big? Have you Maybe seen Big? Big Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks? No. no? Okay. okay. So All it's right. yeah, it's that right. premise of um, Billy Batson becomes gets uh, this, these powers from – I don't want to get too nerdy, but he gets, he gets these powers from an old god. He don't want yeah, to get. Yeah, yeah. He don't want to get too. And nerdy. By the way, the actor that plays that god, uh-huh. he's in like every single movie, bro. Is he? Zach. I don't. I don't know who the, the guy's name was. Do you know his name? No, I don't. But <laughs> Blood Diamond. Blood Diamond. Okay. So I I really enjoyed that. I was surprised how dark it was. I didn't realize it was PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah, it's PG thirteen. Uh, uh, what's the. Act. David F. Sandberg, the director from Lights Out and uh, Annabelle. Caroline. No, I don't know. Annabelle? Anyway, Annabelle. Annabelle 2. He was the director for Annabelle 2. Thank you. And uh, so he comes from a horror background. I was really shocked that there were scenes in this movie that I don't want to spoil, but very scary stuff happens in these scenes that if I brought my – if I had kids and they were – That like, you knew about? That I knew about. No. And uh, – if they were of a young age, I would be. Uh, I would have been kind of sh- scared to have them there because they're very scary scenes. Uh, some not graphic, but just kind of like whoa! I didn't expect that to in this superhero movie. Just because we're so like used to, the- used to the the trope of what movies and what uh, superhero movies are like. But I really like the movie. Uh, I felt like the ending was a little too comic booky, in my opinion. The ending kind of falls falls apart, but I still think it's my second favorite of the DC movies. Which um, was your favorite? I think Wonder Woman is my favorite. Why? Yeah. I don't know. I, I thought that uh, a lot of homages to the original Superman, which I really enjoyed as a kid. And I thought the story and the writing was really d- well done. Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Patty Jenkins did a re- really good job with it. Um, and Gal Gadot absolutely killed it. She was obviously the, the biggest question mark going into the movie just because she hasn't really had that much of an opportunity to act and star in a movie, let alone that. So I thought that she did a really good job with that. And I thought Chris Pine, I, I don't think there's a movie I've seen with Chris Pine that I haven't enjoyed. So that was, and I've always enjoyed. So the, their relationship was really good, and I bought into it. And okay, now there's a now there's a challenge. Find a movie that Chris Pine isn't good yeah. in. That you don't like? I watched well this this uh this summer I watched his Netflix movie that uh, was basically a tie in. Chris, Chris Pine. Pine, Mr. Blue Eyes. He's in Star Trek, and, <laughs> yeah. but he was in the the movie that ties into Braveheart. Oh man, hell yeah, he's the man, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's real. So, yeah, uh, his uh, his movie that ties into Braveheart that was a uh, that was one that was like okay, it was kind of a slow burn, but I still enjoyed the it. The one that was on uh, Netflix. Yeah, I watched. Uh, no, no, I watched the movie Outlaw King. Yes, that's what it's called, Outlaw Bro, King. I love because already tying into historic movies, Outlaw King was good. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, like um, so I enjoyed uh, Chris Pine in the movie. I felt like a lot like how Shazam the ending just kind of derails it a little bit, but it's still a good time up until that point. And anyway, so okay, so then we get to challenge each other for yes. films for next week. Yes, as we close as we close this out. Yeah, what movie would you like me to see? What movie do I? How about you give me yours first? And me then, first. Yeah, and then I let me ponder my Annihilation. Annihilation. Okay, I like that. Hold on, let me write this down. Annihilation with Natalie Portman last year. Yeah, it's so it's such a good movie. I'm, I'll be happy. Have to you seen it? Oh yeah, I'll be happy to. Oh, you've it. seen it though. Yeah, Tam. Annihilation. Uh, yeah. yeah, my little sister and I last year we went together. Awesome movie. The, one of the latest movies that actually make me feel sick watching it. Like just like it makes your stomach turn. Is is it a scary movie? Oh, yeah. it's suspenseful. I'd be gangster in the streets, but when it comes to scary movies, bro. No, it's actually more suspenseful than scary. It also bends with your mind. Yeah. And it really is. It's a, it, it messes with your brain. I love it. It's one of my favorite films. I'll give you mine. You give me my, you give me yours. Okay. A movie that I watched last year uh, on Netflix as well, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs by the Coen Brothers. Oh, yeah. As one of Netflix's slew of movies that were nominated. We're going to close out here. Um, some things that keep in mind this weekend. Uh, Game of Thrones premiere is on Sunday. Never heard of it. You excited for that, Jim? Never, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Never, All right. No. Um, no. Yeah. Odds are we're gonna get the Star Wars trailer on Friday. Red Star Wars celebration this week. So that, Star Wars what? Exactly. Never heard of it. And then if Jim wants to go, we're gonna go see Disney Nature's Penguins yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll go see it. Disney Nature's yeah. Penguins tomorrow. We Shut got, up, dude. We got I'll a go premiere for for Disney Nature's Penguins. So and it's Emily's birthday. And it's Emily's birthday. Tomorrow so today. Well. We appreciate you joining us here on our second episode of the Movie Hour. We want to thank you, Emily, for coming out. And how can everyone find you? Uh, Emily Fox SLC. On Instagram, it's Emily Fox underscore SLC. Perfect. And then Tua, our luxurious Tua, how can we find you on the social medias? You can find, you know, follow me on Tua Keloha, T-U-A-K-E-A-L-O-H-A, on Instagram. Uh, Dear Lord Movie on Instagram, D E A R L O R D M O V I E. Perfect. And Dear keep in mind that uh, premiere, keep in uh, touch with our. I will post it on our Facebook page when that comes out. And Jim, how can the people find you? Uh, G Y M M Y S M O O T H. Jimmy Smooth. And then you can find me at Mr. Clarkster, M R underscore Clarkster on all the social medias and make sure to follow us on instagram we're at at the movie hour and on twitter we are the underscore movie underscore hour and then on our facebook page as well and we thank you and we will see you next week